أعوذ بالله سميع العليم الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة All perfect praise is due to Allah the Almighty I testify that none is worthy of worship except Allah and I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final prophet and messenger. Last time, in the last session, we stopped, or we concluded rather, verse 23. We spoke about the description of hell and some of the punishment Allah azza wa jal prepared for the dwellers of hellfire, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to protect us from it. Allahumma amin. Today we will continue with verse number 24 of Surah An Naba. Allah says, لا يذوقون فيها بردا ولا شرابا. And they will not taste therein coolness or drink. Allah Azza wa Jal informs in this verse that the people of hellfire, we seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal from being amongst them, will neither have coolness outwardly nor inwardly. Nothing to cool them down, cool their bodies down, their flesh, their skin down, and nothing to cool their thirst or quench, quench their thirst inwardly. Let us touch upon some of the punishments related to this verse, meaning skin, body, and the inner punishment of the human's body. For those who will be rightfully so, thrown into hell. One thing that Allah Azza wa Jal informs us about in the Quran is that the skin of those who will be thrown in hell and punished in hell will continuously be renewed for the purpose of extra and additional punishment. Allah Azza wa Jal says in verse 65 of Surah An-Nisa, كُلَّمَا نَضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَهَا 
لِيَذُوقُ الْعَذَابِ Which means, every time their skins are roasted, we will replace them with other skins, new skins. Why? What is the purpose? Allah says, so they may taste the punishment. So the sole purpose of renewing and replacing the skin, the roasted skin, is that people who were deserving or are deserving of the punishment of hell will taste more and more and more punishment. So this type of punishment to the skin is something that is non-stop. It is endless. Rightfully so. As a consequence of denial, negligence, refusal to adhere to the path of Allah Azza wa Jal, to the word of Allah Azza wa Jal, and to the religion of Allah Azza wa Another external punishment, when someone is walking around in a, on a hot day and the sun is 45 degrees in the middle of the day, he seeks a, a shaded area to cool himself down. Well, let us hear what Allah Azza wa Jal prepared for those who will be thrown and punished in hellfire with regards to shade. Their shade in hellfire will be of smoke, black smoke, that will not bring about coolness, nor will it shade them, nor will it protect them from anything. Allah says in chapter Al-Mursalat, verses 30 and 31, which means proceed to a shadow of smoke having three columns but having no cool shade and availing not against the flame. So what is the type of air they're provided in hellfire? It is extremely hot air to breathe. Allah Azza wa Jal describes in chapter Al-Waqa'ah verses 42 through 44. He's describing the environment, the situation they will be suffering through. في سموم وحميم وظل يحموم لا بارد ولا كريم They will be in scorching fire with extremely hot air and scalding water and a shade of black smoke neither cool nor beneficial. The following verse, which describes further the suffering of the dwellers of hellfire, verse 25, Allah says, <laughs> So the first verse, or the previous verse rather, Allah told us that they will not taste in hell coolness or drink except the following, which is the current verse, except scalding water and prolent. This is what they will be provided with. This is the only thing they will find. Their drink, as Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned in this verse, is scalding water. But what does this water do to them? Allah Azza wa Jal, for more humility, tells us that these people 
as hot as they feel, as thirsty as they feel, no escape from smoke, from fire, they will start asking, please, water, please, rescue. But, too late. And this is one of the reasons why we read the Qur'an. This is one of the reasons why we understand the Qur'an or try to understand the Qur'an is that so we can act upon it and protect ourselves and shield ourselves from this, from that moment of sorrow and regret when sorrow and regret are of no avail. Allah says in the Qur'an, chapter Al-Kahf, verse 29, وَإِن يَسْتَغِيثُوا يُغَاثُوا يُغَاثُوا بِمَا إِن كَالْمُهْلِ يَشْوِ الْوُجُوهِ And if they call for relief, they want relief, they will get relief. But a different type of relief. A different relief than that which a person receives when he is calling for it in this dunya, in the akhirah, this kind of relief is different. And if they call for relief, they will be relieved with water. What type of water? What is the description of this water that Allah Azza wa Jal will relieve them with? With water like murky oil or melted copper or very stinky pus and very hot pus. That's the kind of water they will get as relief. You want relief? This is what you will be relieved with. This is the type of water. This is the type of drink the dwellers of hellfire will receive when they call upon asking for relief. which scowls their faces. Can you imagine drinking out of a cup or a mug or a container? And then as you drink, you lose everything, you bur everything is melting. Ayyadun Billah. Allah says in verse 15 of chapter Muhammad, وَسُقُوا مَاءً حَمِيمًا فَقَطْعَ أَمْعَاءَهُمْ And they are given to drink scalding water that will cut their intestines. So as it goes down, it melts the flesh, the, the, the face, the skin of the face, and it cuts through as it goes down. That's the type of relief people will be getting there. Rabi' ibn Anas said, this scalding water would be water that has reached the maximum temperature any water can ever reach. The hottest temperature any water can reach. Allah said, as we mentioned, they will be relieved with or provided with scalding water and prolens. Ibn Kathir said this is a combination of the following. It's the combination of the pus of the people of hellfire, their sweat, their tears, and their wounds. Whatever comes out of their wounds. Can you imagine that being a drink one takes when he feels hot? and wants something to cool him down? Just reading about it makes one want to throw up. Just reading about it or hearing about it is bad enough. Let alone those who would actually have to suffer through and live this as their life as their eternal life with regards to the non-believers, and an interval unknown, undefined, we cannot perceive because the time scale is different. 
A day here is not a day there. A day there, as Allah says, is a thousand years in length. Shaykh al Uthaymeen rahmatullah alayhi said that this is extremely cold. Now notice, two opposite ends. He said it is stinky and extremely cold. And then he said, so Allah combined for them in hellfire two types of punishment. Extremely hot and extremely cold to change the types of punishment for more suffering as they go through their lives in hellfire. This is enough admonishment. This is enough as a reminder. When you, when you hold up a cup of water, or a glass of water rather, to try to drink when you feel thirsty, remember this. When one of us is about to do something that displeases Allah, let us try to remember this. That this sin will lead me to suffer such suffering, to go through such punishment. Can we endure through it? Will anyone be able to go through this easily? Let us always remember this and remind one another with this. Remind our families our wives, our children, our brothers, our sisters, our fathers and mothers. Because I tell you, brothers and sisters, no one, absolutely no one, can tolerate such suffering. With this we will conclude this session. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ